So I'm here today with Nikita. Nikita, um, I understand that you're running a quant conference here in the UK uh, in the next uh, few weeks. And perhaps you could tell us a little bit about yourself, how you've come into the quant market, why you're interested in alpha strategies, what's brought you into this market? Sure, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Andy, for, for having me here. Really excited. Um, so my name is Nikita Fadeev. Uh, I'm originally from Belarus. Uh, and back in 2017, when I was third year university student, uh, I was doing maths and I got uh, the, the quant finance fever. Uh, I got really interested in, in, in trading. Uh, I just read everything that I could find. Uh, I started talking to people and learning as much as I could. Uh, and uh, as a way to continue learning, uh, I thought it would be cool to uh, arrange uh, a society um, focused on quant strategies. Uh, and um, uh, at, at the same time, uh, as, as a part of my learning process, I thought it, uh, about attending uh, some of these quant, uh, quant finance conferences to dive deeper into uh, some academic and industry research, but all of the events were either expensive or invitation only. Uh, so I, I couldn't uh, get, get, get into those. So I thought about establishing one uh, and this, um, this gave birth to the Quant Conference uh, and the Quant Group, which, is, uh, which was uh, the, the, this research team focused on uh, Quant strategies. And so fast forward uh, three years, um, now this uh, quant uh, group, the quant group got a, um, did like a joint venture with Fasanara Capital, uh, which is a London-based uh, quant hedge fund to launch Fasanara Digital, which is uh, the uh, quant uh, crypto fund that, that we are running. Uh, and the quant conference grew um, exponentially. And by now, we, this is going to be our fifth iteration. Um, and uh, tell me, this year, obviously, you've got a huge, uh, prestigious venue last year. How are you managing to cope with the uh, current restrictions and coronavirus and encouraging attendees to still come, even though you can't yeah. give them silver service and five star uh, uh, um, experience? Yeah, well, this is a, a tricky one because obviously uh, networking is a central component of, of any uh, conference uh, and quant conferences are no exception. Uh, and we paid uh, a lot of care and a lot of um, uh, for, for for the for the selection of venues. So we hosted uh, in some of the most prestigious uh, venues uh, in, in London, but also uh, in New York as well. Um, and so basically, uh, the way um, that the, the the new norm, which is the the virtual conferences, um, I think that they're going to be around uh, for 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 the foreseeable future. Uh, and so um, with all of this restriction in place, that's the only way to go. Um, and I think the way to think about it is just, it's a matter of trade-offs. Um, some things you, you can uh, do instead, uh, some things you can improve, but um, realistically uh, you can't uh, substitute uh, the, the personal one-to-one -one interaction that uh, a traditional uh, physical conferences offer. Uh, but what we're doing is uh, we're using uh, a lot of um, uh, leading, industry leading uh, software in order to uh, give uh, our attendees a proxy for the uh, traditional um, physical events. Uh, and the, the prestige, the word that you use to describe, I think uh, for us, uh, it's always been the case it was coming mostly from the agenda. And this is what we are paying uh, the most attention to. Uh, we are trying to cover the most interesting topics uh, give it an interesting spin and more importantly um, get um, some of the most well-known and established um, people from the industry and academia uh, and uh, even more so uh, try to invite those people that are not really like speaking at other events are in, and are not really public individuals but nonetheless are some of the biggest players in the market. Okay, and when you're talking about the platform for the event that you're going to be using now, um, I mean, every, every event has had a platform of some description in the past, but this yeah. year, I think the platforms have had to develop and become more smart. So how did you come up with the concept of the platform that you're using? Can you tell us a little bit more about more about how it will work at the event? Sure. <clears throat> well, I mean, uh, the, the virtual platforms, uh, as you say, it's, uh, it's no innovation, uh, but um, the, the demands and requirements uh, as COVID came, um, went exponentially. Uh, and I think some of these uh, service providers stepped up their game uh, big time uh, and offering already a quite a comprehensive uh, suite of services for virtual events. Um, what, what was uh, kind of down for us uh, to, to choose, um, we're evaluating on many different dimensions. Uh, and uh, 
kind of the, the customization of the platform uh, and what it offers uh, and uh, the, the unique feature that, that it facilitates. But if you think about it, uh, this virtual event, apart from you actually not being physically at, at, at the place and not being able to interact with these people one-to-one -one, like in the same fashion, um, everything else is kind of almost the same um, because the, the content will be exactly the same. It will be streamed. You can actually pause it. You can uh, review it. You can, you know, um, check it, uh, come back to it later. So it's it's really nice. But equally uh, for sponsors, I think it's it's potentially even better because what you are doing is you are exchanging, um, you are getting just a lot more quantity because uh, with virtual events, you can target much higher audience and much wider uh, scope. Uh, and you can get a lot more analytics because uh, the, by virtue of, uh, of virtual conferences, uh, you, you are getting a, a, every interaction is noted down uh, and detailed and then exported uh, to sponsors. And even uh, virtual booths uh, are a uh, thing that uh, started to be uh, introduced. Uh, you can um, attend uh, where it, it would be almost like actual you know, physical booths. There will be like a company description, all the services that they provide. You can include all sorts of links and then you can schedule one-to-one -one meetings. And this is where I think some, some people are going a bit lazy uh, and just doing a virtual conferences over Zoom. Uh, I think the what moves the needle is the one-to-one the -one calls. Uh, and uh, for example, the platform that we're using, it uses artificial intelligence to be able to um, understand which people you should be talking to and they you know, process lots of data on which session you sign up for, what skill set that you have, or what other people that you connected to. So it's it's it's, it's quite nice. Uh, and if if you have the the right kind of goals set for for the event, you can actually I think achieve way way more impact with virtual events. Wow. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the sponsors though, because I understand that your your market is basically quantitative analysts in any country and any uh, geography globally. Um, but you know, we've got people in Singapore, we've got people in Hong Kong, we've got people in New York, all over the world. So how, how have you managed to uh, match your sponsors with the fact that your event will probably be more global than ever now? Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing that everything I, I think is good, is going more and more global. Uh, and for, for sponsors, there are kind of several dimensions that, that, that we are offering. So um, for, for um, some companies like Morgan Stanley, which is our platinum sponsor and main partner for the conference, um, that that uh, they are uh, supporting us. Uh, essentially, what we are doing is uh, we're helping them uh, to get access to top talent, uh, because uh, these days it, it's really difficult uh, to get in front of um, elite data scientists that are just coming out of the gate. Because um, and also kind of uh, get get them in uh, and recruit them, uh, entertain them, and things like that. It's it's really difficult because competition is as high as ever. So what Quan, the Quan Conference is solving is uh, is, is this uh, first of all, and this obviously um, dates back to my university days uh, when I was in the same situation and uh, it, going through all of this application was like a, ex, a extremely cumbersome. So we're we're creating a marketplace where supply meet demands uh, for students, but then uh, on the on the same on, on the, another dimension, uh, we are uh, connecting. Uh, uh, the, the most interesting people from the industry, academia, investors, service providers, students. So we we'll gather everyone together, uh, and uh, this is uh, comes all together with uh, some of them uh, cutting edge research that's presented by our uh, speakers, uh, and uh, some of the burning issue topics that are being discussed. So it's so that it facilitates the most interesting and topical conversations within this community, and this community has a, a really big value. Uh, to to offer and so we're trying to to expose our sponsors to it and help them to achieve their goals uh, through it and tell us more about the uh quantitative analysts and uh people in the quantitative sector who are actually attending is it more market risk is it credit risk you've got algo trading people what kind of person actually attends the event well i mean as, as i partly mentioned uh, it's a really wide scope uh, because um, essentially, what, what what people are interested in is to to network, uh, and this could be you know like uh, C level executives for uh, quant hedge funds that are interested uh, to met to network with peers, to meet some uh, investors, uh, to just 
uh, learn more about what the industry is up to, what are some interesting uh, things uh, in the agenda. Uh, but then for, for students, uh, obviously it's, it's a marketplace, it's a way how to get hired, uh, how to learn about companies and research. Uh, for, for quant, I think what it uh, directly applicable is for those that have a more data science role, uh, where they uh, crawl through lots of data, uh, they play with some like, you know, machine learning, uh, they are trying to, you know, clean up some stuff, uh, make some predictions uh, and this kind of things. Uh, but, you know, equally, I I'm pretty sure that uh, people from, from other domains uh, can, can find uh, a nugget or two to learn from it. And, and you know, from crypto, for example, uh, we have um, uh, on the second day, we have uh, half of the day reserved for, for cryptocurrencies. Uh, and there um, it, we're inviting, you know, some of the biggest players, uh, crypto fund hedge funds, investors uh, to, to discuss this topic because uh, obviously, it's getting more and more uh, exciting uh, as, as Bitcoin surpasses uh, local maxima. Of course, however, what we've noticed over the years that a lot of quantitative analysts are risk averse. Are you, do you not find that a little bit with your audience? I mean, all these concepts like crypto and these other things, <laughs> traditionally, quants have been a little bit cautious about going into those sectors. How have you overcome those objections? Well, do, do you mean in terms of uh, trading those uh, asset class, those emerging asset classes, or more like you know getting recruited and uh, getting into those? It, it, it is more the trading side of it, yeah, because obviously you have to be exposed to crypto, and with the Federal yeah. Reserve and central banks being so anti-crypto for so long, you know, it's, yeah. it's 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 probably after PayPal this week and all the other news we've heard as well. It is now coming up to the fore, but these people have traditionally been risk averse. Well, I mean, uh, I think risk averse might, uh, might be a one way to describe it, but uh, what comes to me is that um, it's uh, the the size of the opportunity because when you are trading, you know, like uh, successful equities and you're uh, very used to certain le level of diligence, certain level of liquidity, certain level of infrastructure, you come to crypto, it, it's, it's not like that. Uh, so th that's been uh, one of the big, you know, stopping points. Uh, for uh, big hedge funds that have, you know, quite restricted um, um, memorandum uh, and mandate uh, that of asset classes that they can touch and exposures that they can take. It's not that, you know, they, they just sign up to uh, BitMEX, Huobi or whichever other exchange uh, and just start trading. Uh, it, it requires uh, a lot of uh, regulatory compliance and uh, risk assessment. Uh, so in, in that regard, I totally agree that um, quants were perhaps a bit more hesitant, but then it really depends on who you are talking about. The, the prop trading shops, I think most of them, or like a very large number, like the traditional Chicago uh, shops uh, are very active in the space. Um, they're just doing it, you know, with prop capital, uh, which they, they are you know, putting at risk. They, they don't need to ask too many questions, uh, but, you know, if, uh, but equally, uh, the, the likes of Renaissance or Tudor Capital or a um, bunch of other places, they, they, they announced and they are getting the exposure through CME and, uh, and through other properties or getting, you know, direct uh, spot exposure to uh, some of these, you know, listed uh, uh, stocks. Um, so I think, you know, uh, for, for tapping into this uh, asset class, the, the time is coming, but equally, you know, a lot of the people already have uh, chips in the game. Uh, we have noticed that a lot of these prop trading firms have been moving to Florida. You're not thinking of doing that, are you? No, no, no. Because uh, <laughs> obviously we're talking about Citadel here. Who else would we be talking about? Uh, but when it comes to these topics, obviously Citadel did move down to Florida and hired out that big hotel for their stuff. But we also had a concept called Black Swan at the beginning of the year. There's been various discussions about alpha strategies. Um, we've seen huge stock uh, uh, fluctuations as well in global stock. Uh, stock. What is the big topic? What are the big topics? That you want to talk about at the event and that your speakers will be talking about so uh there are, to be honest a lot of interesting things that 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 we're going to cover uh, one of the um one of the I guess themes will be uh, if i were to list uh, so some uh, recent developments uh, in in machine learning uh, and its application to execution uh, so we're going to have a few keynotes uh, on that uh, but then equally we're going to have uh, for example aaron brown um, who is really known uh, in, in the industry, uh, ex-chief risk officer from AQR. So he will be talking about um, some of these 
uh, risk management um, and frameworks uh, that, that were very much applicable uh, during the COVID and how to um, how how to manage you know this this risks. Then we're gonna have uh, a few more topics uh, around COVID risk management, how to deal with it, uh, what, what were the implications, uh, what is the new reality. Then we're gonna have a couple of panels around uh, the man and machine interaction. One of them is actually uh, called man versus machine, uh, where essentially we're gonna discuss. Uh, what are the advantages that uh, are introduced by machines? Uh, where this is going? Is it uh, going towards uh, augmented intelligence where it will be uh, machines complementing uh, humans? Or is it going to be completely uh, autonomous uh, artificial intelligence? Uh, and then we're, we're going to be uh, touching on crypto. So we're going to have um, Professor Alex Lipton uh, from uh, Sila. Sila Mani. Uh, so he will be talking about the automated market makers uh, and DeFi, uh, some stable coins. Uh, so lot, lots of buzzwords uh, in, 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 in one mix, but kind of making sense of some of those trends that, uh, for people that are not uh, in, in the market 24 uh, seven. And, and also for crypto specifically, we'll have a panel on navigating the liquidity because Obviously, the, the, the liquidity is fractured. There are lots of uh, issues around infrastructure and how to uh, obtain efficiency and to navigate the, uh, the waves of volatility. So it, it should be quite, quite, quite interesting and uh, everyone uh, who, is, um, who is in quant space should find uh, a lot of interesting topics. Super. Nikita, that's been a really good overview of the event. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing the event and obviously uh, partaking if possible as well. And clearly uh, the ambition behind your concept is very high. We are not aware of any events that have actually peaked your level or been better on than your level. So we hope that this event will continue to uh, fly the flag for the quants industry. I think the quants industry need their flag flown more anyway, as the world becomes more aware of the role that these individuals play in our governments, in our futures, in our banking structures. So thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you. We wish you all the best for your event. Thank you very much for having me.